very warm welcome to this online sermon from Emmanuel Church, Hansworth, Birmingham, UK. May you be blessed as you listen to the preaching of God's Word. Some time ago, in one of the children's talks, I asked the children to draw a picture of the church. And I think all the children ended up drawing the picture of this church building on the out, from the outside. Their concept of the church is the church building. Now this is true not only of children but probably most adults as well. When we think of church, we think of cathedrals, or buildings, ornate buildings, modern or old, grand buildings that are beautiful. But the word church has got nothing to do with the building. We need to get this out of our head. Now, on a Sunday morning, we started to work through the book of Titus. Last time we introduced the book. Um, Paul introduced himself. Um, chapter 1 of uh, Titus, verse 1, he calls himself a bond servant, a slave. And Jesus and also an apostle. <coughs> and we looked at his opening greeting. From verse 1 to verse 4. But now he tells us his purpose in writing. Remember, we said that uh, this church that he's writing to was in Crete. Treating people that have been influenced by the culture around them. Chapter 1, verse 12, it talks about the culture being full of people who are liars and evil and lazy. And Paul is saying, what did he say in this letter? That look, Christianity is nothing like that. So he leaves Titus. On the island of Crete, he writes this letter and he says, put things in order in the church. And he tells us in chapter 1, verse 5, he says, for this reason I left you. In Crete, that you should set in order the things that are lacking. And one of those things, the word to appoint elders, chapter 1, verse 5, in every city as I command. So these were small churches in different cities in Crete. Maybe house churches. And Titus was told to put things in order by appointing elders in the church. So this morning, what I want to do is look to see what is the church, what is it, and how is the church to be ordered or governed. And we'll be looking at the role of the leaders, elders. So we're going to be looking at lots of different passages. Next time we'll look at Chapter 1, verse 6 through to 9. Oh, and consider the qualifications that are required for someone to be an elder. So, this morning, what I want to do is ask a number of questions that relate to the church. The first question is this What is the church? What is the church? What is the church? Now, the church is not a church building. It is not a political group to, to lobby politicians. 
It's not there to deal with the with the injustices in society. It's not there to deal with the rights of minority. It's not there to deal with poverty. We need to be absolutely clear what the church is. The word church comes from the Greek word ecclesia, which simply means an assembly of people who are called out. It's a reference to God's people. An assembly of people, a gathering or a congregation of people who are called out of the world. It's a, it's a gathering of people who are saved, who are born again. So you could be here this morning <coughs> you could be att attending the church gathering. You may even come regularly. But you're not part of the church. Because you are not saved. You are not born again. The church is a gathering of God's now there are lots of references to this, and we don't have time to go into them all, so we'll just look at a few. Matthew chapter 16 verse 18, which is what we read at the beginning. The word ecclesia is used there. Jesus, he says to Peter, after Peter says, you know, that he's the son of God. He says in verse 18, On this rock I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will build my ecclesia. The job is using the Greek translation. <coughs> now notice what it says there. It's not speaking about people building the church. Jesus says, I will build my church. He's not building a, a, a structure, is he? A bricks and mortar. No, he's building his church, he's calling people to himself. In the book of Acts, the word church is used 21 times. Let's just have a look, we're not going to go through it. Acts chapter 2, verse 47. At the end of verse 47, and the Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. Who added to the church? The Lord added to the church. Not only is that building, he's adding people to the church. And who is being added to the church? Those who were being it's people who have repented. People who have come to the Lord. They are being added to the church. Let me tell you something. In the eyes of God, the most important institution on this planet is the the face of this world is not the United Nations. It's not any particular nation. It's not any charitable foundation. It's not any missionary organization or even any Christian organization. What God values 
Kelompok kisah ini kata-kata yang I love Kata-kata yang Above and beyond everything else So much is another one thing In this world Is dunia apa itu? Is the church Not dunia apa itu? Kelisya The church Kelisya Ephesians 5 verse 25 Paul said Ephesians 5 verse 25 Paul said Christ loved the church and gave himself for the church He proved his love for the church by dying for the church God's purposes in this world are not centered around any person or any nation. God's purposes in this world are centered around His church. Christ is building His church. We need to be clear. The church is not a building. Yes, we may need a building to meet in. The church needs a building so the church can meet in the building. But the building is not the church. Historically, as churches grew, in, in the book of Acts, they used to meet in homes and maybe the homes of wealthy people. There were no official buildings. And as the church, the people of God grew, it became necessary to have church buildings. But the danger is this. Historically, when the emphasis has shifted from people to buildings, and buildings become more grand and ornate. Or building a Sonia, Sonia, and Martha, Manjania. And people start thinking, oh, this is where God lives. You know what happens? Churches become more ritualistic, more external. Yes, sometimes idolatrous. Because the, the emphasis shifts from the heart to the building. God does not live in this building. God lives in the hearts of Christian people. It's not the beauty of the building, but the beauty of the heart. Yes, buildings need to be comfortable, they need to be functional. No, we should put more emphasis on our hearts and our characters than on buildings. Okay, secondly then. Why should we be part of a local church? Now, there are deluded and misguided people. Sadly, sometimes Christians would think, you know what, I don't need to go to church. I'm fine. I can worship at home. I can worship with my family. I can be part of an online church. So I, I can listen to the best preachers in the world, I can listen to my favorite preacher. If you are not part of the local church, I don't care how spiritual you think you are, I don't care how much knowledge of the Bible you have, I don't care how much you fast, how much you pray, how many qualifications you have in theology. If you are not part of the church, you will never grow as a church. Your character will never develop. I've used this illustration before. Some of you may be familiar with it. 
few years ago, it was not reserved for people to have new house. Did I know that guess yet? It's old now. Um, we did a loft conversion. I remember the loft when I escaped. So I decided to put a floor in the loft. It was dusty, it was dirty. So I was working in the loft, and then I ran out of screws. The screw got away. So I had to go to Wix and put the screws. I went to Wix, and everybody gave me funny looks. I heard a board on my desk. And I thought, what's wrong with you? I got to the counter, and the lady looked at me, and she was like giggling, you know, behind her teeth, just hiding her. And I thought, what's wrong with these people? Got back home, he was in the kitchen, she looked at me, and she burst out laughing. And I thought, what's wrong? She said, go and have a look in the mirror. I went to the bathroom, and my face looked like a coal miner. All the dust from the loft was on my face, but I didn't know it, I didn't see it. But being around people, exposed my state, Caused me to look in the mirror. I saw I saw my true self. And then I was able to wipe off the dust. Brother, sister, we could never grow as Christians. If we are not around people, we will never see flaws in our character. We'll never see them. It's only when we're around people that we realize these things in us. And then we can go to the mirror of God's word, see it as people. Or we be feeling people and then we could begin to deal with the dust and the fear. I remember George Verwell, who was the director of OM. He, he said this. He said, when I was in my twenties, I thought I was a saint. He said I was conquering the world for Christ. And uh, everybody said to me, you're going to be great. And he said, I began to believe it. And I thought I was so holy. And then he said, and then I got married. Suddenly, I, see, I saw all these faults in my character. You cannot grow unless you are all around people. This is essential. Online pastors are not your pastors. You have no relationship with you and they don't know you. They don't know where you are spiritually. They can't see your growth. They can't see whether you come or not to church. You can listen to the best sermons in the world, but there is no accountability. Without the church, you can never grow. Turn with me to, to uh, Acts chapter 2 again. Once we are saved, God gives us something that we call the means of grace. This is things that God gives to us to grow as a Christian. Chapter 2, verse 41. Here on the day of Pentecost, people were saved. Okay, so then it tells us in verse 41 that they were baptized. Baptism is important. Not to be saved, but it's a command that Jesus gave and if you want to grow as Christian, you need to be baptized. 
Maria, can you baptize yourself? Can you baptize yourself? Yeah, we are <coughs> no, you are baptized in the church. Verse 41. Verse 42. Be a pillar in the church. Be a thing that God gives to us. It says here that they, can, they continued steadfastly to stop. They were saved, they were baptized, and then they did these things. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. So now we have the word of God. And God has given preachers who are gifted to expound the word of God, and we need to be under he talks there about fellowship. Fellowship is essential. We interact with each other. Sunday. And especially in the home group context. Those who don't attend, you'll find there's something lacking in you. Your growth will be stunted. You're not really fellowshipping. Breaking of bread, it says that verse 42. You don't break bread at home on your own with your family. You break bread in the church. And then he talks about prayer. He's not talking about private prayer. He's talking about prayer in the context of the church. And those of you who never attend the prayer meeting, you'll find that something within you will not develop as a believer. You'll never learn to pray with others, and you'll find your prayer life.
Now, when we talk about church, people talk about priests, <laughs> bishop, bishop archbishop, archbishop the wear funny looking gown, and the dog collar, and they carry a staff and they have really funny looking now you might say to me, why, why don't you have a dog collar on? Well, I'll tell you why I think that I'm not a dog. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. You might say, well, you're a pastor. Should you have a dog collar on? There's lots of terms that are used in churches. Pope, Pope, Cardinal, Cardinal, Church Warden, Church the Warden, and actually it can become very, very confusing. Shall I tell you something? None of these roles are found in the Bible. There are no dog collars. There are no special gowns. There are no special places. It doesn't make you special, it doesn't make you holy. Someone came to the church here once, he's a Muslim. Somebody brought him here. And uh, I saw him at the door. And then I didn't say to his friend. You know, his friend thought because he's from an Asian background, he's a Muslim, you know, he might feel comfortable here. And then I heard him say, Next time, can we go to a proper church? <laughs> what he meant was a church where you have gowns and so on. The Apostle Paul did not wear gowns or dog clothes. Jesus did not dress specially. He did not have a special white gown to make him stand out. He just wore ordinary clothes like everybody else. These things have been invented by men and by tradition. Sometimes people call me Badri. Now please don't call me that. I just do not like it. You know what the word means? It means father. Or it means priest. There are no priests in the New Testament. A priest in the Old Testament brought a sacrifice on behalf of the people for their sins and offered it to God. In the New Testament, Jesus, the high priest, he came and he offered it. There are no priests in the Bible in the New Testament because Jesus has fulfilled that role. He is our <coughs> The only role, spiritual role in the Bible that is found for leaders in the church are elders. That is all. Elders. Only elders. elders. And they can be referred to as pastors or overseers or bishops. A bishop is not a special role. Bishop <laughs> Elders are described with one role. And it, and it can be described as a pastor, an overseer, a bishop, or an elder. So, we have this brother here, brother He's a husband. He's a very good husband. <laughs>
elders in the church, they would sort of sometimes the Bible calls them elders because it talks about maturity in the Lord and their rule in the church. Sometimes they are called bishops to oversee the word. Or sometimes they are called pastors because they pastor and shepherd. So, myself, Gladira, Gladira, Shingara, Atul, Atul, still, we are elders in the church. We are also bishops, overseers, we are also pastors. There's only one role in the church. Let, let me just show you this very quickly. Very quickly. In Acts chapter 20, the passage that we read, in verse 17, Paul speaks to the elders of in Ephesus. Okay, in verse 17, he calls them elders. Then he's talking to the same people in verse 28, and he says, he calls them overseers, bishops. Or, and then he called them shepherds. Can you see? He's talking to elders. They're called overseers and shepherds. The same people. The same people. And in a church, one of the elders may be set aside to take a more leading role in preaching and teaching. And then people may address him as the pastor as with me. Not Padre, please. Okay, pastor. Okay, but essentially I'm an elder with the others, but I'm set aside and to, to, to work for The only other role in the church is that of a deacon. Deacons are not spiritual leaders. They are servants. They are there to relieve the elders. Practical things, such as maintaining the building, setting up things before and after the meeting, um, and uh, DBS, admin work, and things like that. That's what the work of a deacon is. But leaders, leaders are called elders. There is no such thing as an archbishop, an archbishop, a pope. Fifthly then, finally, last question. What is the responsibility of the congregation to elders? In the church, everybody is equal. There's no greater, there's no inferior. There's no high caste, low caste. There is actually no caste. We don't recognize caste. We are believers, we are one in Christ. We are brothers and sisters. But what is the duty of the church? Elders are there so that they keep things in order and the church function. They are not perfect, but they are under the word of God. And if an elder does anything wrong to bring disrepute on the church, they, they engage in immorality or steal the money, then with two or three witnesses they can be removed from the world. But there are obligations of the congregation to elder. Turn to 1 Timothy, 1 Timothy, chapter 5, verse 17. We are to honor, honor elders, that's what it says here. It says here, verse 17, let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor. Double honor. 